Lesson 24 The Seventh Commandment of Leadership, What Do I Need to Change, Part 1 This is the 24th lecture of the leadership course, and the theme of this lecture is the seventh leadership mantra, What Do I Need to Change? I have repeatedly emphasized that each leadership mantra reminds us to take action. What do I need to change, points to the action of reflection. Like other leadership mantras we have discussed before, this mantra sounds simple, but it is not easy to use. This mantra consists of only six words and a question mark, but it can point to three different levels of reflection. I call them small reflection, medium reflection, and big reflection. Ordinary people often only engage in small reflection. If you want to become an excellent leader, you need to reflect on these three levels. In many cases, you need to upgrade your reflection and reflect at a higher level. 1. Change action. I previously mentioned that the essence of reflection is to reflect on one's thoughts. Expanding on this essence, there are four key elements to reflection, detachment, emotional release, perspective shift, and practical guidance. Reflection that encompasses these four elements is considered effective. There are, of course, multiple methods of reflection that meet these criteria. I will now share with you the simplest reflection method, which is to frequently ask yourself the question, what do I want to change? This simple phrase is highly effective because it inherently includes the four key elements of reflection. It allows you to detach from the past and present, focus on change, and identify areas that require improvement. This question helps you detach, release emotions, shift perspective, and provides practical guidance to take action and make the necessary changes. However, it is not enough to simply know that you need to change. You must also know at which level you should change. What do I want to change, can refer to three different levels of change, action, goal, and mindset. These are three different levels of change. Changing actions is considered small reflection. Many people's reflections only reach this level. They ask themselves questions such as, What did I accomplish today? Did I do well? How can I do better? They are only considering how to change their actions, which is small reflection. Changing goals is considered medium reflection. Medium reflection is more advanced than small reflection, as it involves reflecting on how to change one's goals. The most advanced level of reflection is large reflection, which involves reflecting on how to change one's mindset. Excellent leaders must master all three levels of reflection. 2. Case Study, Intel's Reflection Allow me to share a real leadership case study to help differentiate between the three levels of reflection. This case study will demonstrate that small reflection often does not work during critical moments. The case study is about Intel Corporation. Intel Corporation is a giant in the chip manufacturing industry, as you probably know. However, you may not know that in the early 1980s, Intel's main product was not chips, but rather memory. Intel was not a chip giant at the time, but a memory giant. However, in the early 1980s, Japanese companies began producing memory, and they did it very well. Intel gradually fell behind in the competition. At the time, the CEO of Intel was Moore, the same Moore who proposed Moore's Law, which is very famous in the IT industry. Moore was the CEO and chairman, and Grove was the president. Moore and Grove were constantly thinking about how to produce better memory and beat the Japanese. They thought about it for a whole year but couldn't come up with a solution. One day, Grove and Moore were discussing again, what do we want to change? They still couldn't come up with an answer. Grove suddenly asked Moore, if the board of directors fired us and hired a new CEO and president, what would they do? Moore replied with a question, would they stop producing memory? Moore was uncertain, but he thought it was possible. Grove said, then why don't we walk out of this office, and then walk back in as the new CEO and president appointed by the board of directors? Then we can do what the new CEO and president would do, 
which is to stop producing memory. Do you understand what Grove meant? He suggested that they walk out of the office, which would mean they were fired by the board of directors. Then they would walk back in as the new CEO and president appointed by the board of directors. They would then do what the new CEO and president would do, which is to stop producing memory. This story is famous in Intel's history because they actually stopped producing memory and changed Intel's fate. 